All right. Good morning, everyone. It is 10.01, so we will get started here today. Um, we will probably have more people rolling in here, but for the sake of time, I know it's precious. We will we will start. So um, welcome this morning, uh, Thursday, September 14th. We have an exciting uh, webinar here today about careers and, and just some great marketing tools um, for success in your career. Um, myself and Ed Winicki, um, the career consultants here for the California, the state of California are heading this up and excited about the opportunity to speak to you all today. Um, a couple housekeeping items. First of all, please mute yourself if you haven't already when you come in just to uh, have background noise be taken away. Um, second thing is if you haven't already signed up for uh, PDRs, uh, please submit the registration so I can record your PDR for, um, for this session. Um, Next thing would be just, we are recording this, so we're going to send that out after. Um, for anyone maybe on your staff that wasn't able to come today, or if you wanna rewatch, um, we will have that available. Uh, probably going to have that downloaded today and sent out um, over the next day or so. So um, a couple thanks, thank yous. Obviously, thank you to the NorCal section and um, Executive Director Len Dumas for the opportunity to present um, and have this platform to speak to you all. And then the Southern California section um, and our executive director there, Nikki Gatch, um, for allowing us to speak today. Um, you know, Ed and I are excited about, again, uh, being here and, and being with you all. So uh, let's get started here. So this is kind of just the overview of today. Obviously, um, the, the title is Careers 101 Crash Course in uh, Marketing and Success. But we're going to really dive into what do we need as humans? Why do we work? Um, what's what's a career kind of looking at ourselves as individuals and how we market ourselves to a facility um, and then kind of go through some strategies to brainstorm and really look at that and assess ourselves and how we present ourselves to a, a, a future employer um, so that's just the overview and we're gonna we're gonna dive right in good morning everyone uh, thank you Caitlin uh, my counterpart and my good friend uh, I'm going to introduce her. She is uh, obviously has a great background, great education. Uh, she has uh, uh, some great green grass uh, uh, career uh, background uh, as an assistant golf professional. And she, uh, not to mention that, if you look at her little runner there, she's run uh, the New York Marathon, uh, which is pretty special. So she, she's an inspiration for me on things like that. Uh, Penn State grad, which is uh, amazing, and um, a former. Um, uh, assistant executive director of the Northern California section. Now I'm lucky to call her not only a great friend as I have for many years, but also uh, my counterpart up north. So uh, everyone welcome Caitlin Doyle today. Thank you, Ed, for the great intro. Um, and I get the honor of uh, introducing Ed Winicki. Um, and for those of you who don't, don't know Ed, um, he's an amazing person, amazing friend of mine as well. Um, those are, you know, his accolades up top there. He's the career consultant for the Southern California section. Um, he's been in the golf industry for over 30 years. I think he's held every single title there probably is. Um, I know he's, um, I think maybe the only one that's won golf professional of the year in SoCal and NorCal, um, is very involved with the CMAA, um, and a ton of other golf organizations. Um, but who Ed is to me is, you know, he's a father. Um, he has two great kids. Uh, one of them there in the photo, Nicole, she's actually an associate here in the NorCal section. So I get to work with Nicole quite often. She's at that Claremont Country Club. So uh, pretty exciting um, dealing with Ed and working with Ed on a regular basis. Um, so and that's a photo there from us from one event we were at together. So uh, just wanted to introduce Ed. Well, great to see everyone today. Thank you, Caitlin, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, I see a lot of familiar faces, and thanks for being here today. Uh, hopefully, we're going to give you a lot of great things you can take back with you, uh, especially something like uh, with Woodrow Wilson. Um, we're not here merely to take to make a living. We're here to enrich the world. And as golf professionals, you you, you do change lives, and in so many ways, whether you realize it or not. Um, because why do you change lives? Because it's, and why do you work? Because it's, we need to, uh, why do we work and what is our career? Um, this is the things we're going to talk about today about taking you into the, into your career and the next things that you do 
obviously, you, you, when you look in the mirror, you want to, you talk about yourself, self-esteem, you know, um, you look at things that you need to do, your psychological needs. I mean, everything through COVID had changed a lot of things for all of us. Um, and, and anybody who was in industry and went through COVID together, uh, it was a difficult time, but also we came out on the uh, on the outside and a lot of those words you see on that slide right there um are things that have impacted all of us and it really has brought our golf community much closer now than we ever have before so very excited about the future of of our business and that's what we're going to be talking about today one of the things thank you ed so kind of going off of you know what do we need as humans um to you know this chart here is like why do we work right um, and, you know, the, the obvious answer as, as the bottom, the psychological needs, right? The, the money associated, um, you know, it feeds our bank account, but at the same time, the things we do and how we interact the golf course and our facilities and what we do on a daily basis really feeds our heart and soul. Um, and so some of these, some of these items here, you know, like words like identity contributing to a, a bigger cause than ourself, um, relationships that we have with our coworkers and our, our PGA members and our PGA associates, and then having purpose uh, behind what we do. You know, I think about, you know, why do we all get into the golf business and why do, why do we like golf? Um, and I think of, I always think of the PGA quote of serve the members and grow the game. You know, our mission statement is really, I think, why we all are in it. We want to serve our fellow professionals. We want to serve our members at our golf courses, our customers. And we want to grow the game because we all know how special the game it is um, and giving back to that community and the junior golfers and the next generation. Um, you know, that's really why we work, um, to fulfill us and to bring us joy and happiness. So um, just kind of an interesting thing to look, about, look at um, when you think about why we're here and, wh and what do we have to offer um, to the golf industry. When you look at your career, um, you can see the, 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 the typical career path. Um, I'm sure there's many different stories and we'll get into stories here in a little bit about how you all got in the business um, and whether you started outside services when you were a teenager or out of college or in your mid twenties or thirties or forties. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you uh, can progress throughout your career. And I'll touch on the top line there, dream job here in a second. Um, this shows uh, a unique way, a unique little chart of how we all got to where we are today. Um, and I will say that, you know, people ask me and, and Caitlin all the time, you know, I, I'm not sure I should move at this point. I'm not sure I should change jobs at this point. It's it's not a job. Anybody that says the word job, I think you're in the wrong business. This is a, a career and one that we all love to do. So when you're changing jobs, you're changing, you're making a career move. And that's something to be to be thinkful and thinking about where and when your next move will be if that's the case um, and how you get there and that's another reason why we're here to help you as well yeah well well said ed and i love that chart because it just shows how much you know we all change jobs in our career but essentially we're still in the same career path and you know you're always striving to be better um so kind of looking at those past couple of slides, you know, we, we know what we need, we know why we're doing this. So now it's kind of time to look at really who we are as people and what we bring to the table and what we, um, what we stand for. Um, so this, I love this slide here is just kind of, you are your own brand. Um, and so this just to me, kind of one of the questions we ask a lot in our interviews is like, what is your superpower? And sometimes people can't answer that. Um, and so really, you know, think about this deep about yourself. If someone asked you, what is your superpower and what do you bring to the table? Like, what is what is your power at the golf course? Um, are you an extremely great with customer service? Are you like the best club fitter at the club? You know, so think about what is your brand and what are what are your powers? Um, and what really sets you apart than others? You know, when you're competing for jobs out in the industry, um, what, what sets you apart from the other candidates um, and what makes you different um, and really hone into that, you know, and that's special. Once you figure out what makes you, you um, dive into that, own that um, and make that yours. Um, do you want to add anything on that, Ed? Yeah, no, I, I you know, and that, thanks, Caitlin. And one of the things that I say too, that when we talk about um, when I'm helping candidates with uh, job interviews or, uh, or working with employers for executive searches, you know, they ask, well, how do you separate some of the candidates? And one of my responses is the it factor. Well, the it factor is something you can't put on paper 
and it's really hard to describe, but uh, Caitlin said it very well, it's or a superpower. What is your superpower and what is your it factor? You have to lay, put it down on a piece of paper and as, as Caitlin said, own it. So know that because that's very important. That's what's one thing that's gonna keep driving you and driving your career to get better. And when you get asked that question in an interview at some point, um, or even if you don't, you can you can tell them, this is why I'm the person for the position. This is my superpower and my separator. Thank you, Ed. Yeah, so kind of looking at yourself now, um, let's kind of look at what a successful company does, right? So a company or a, a club, right? They have a mission statement. So there's a mission statement, but we can also correlate that to more of our personal life. And that would be maybe determining our core values as humans. Who are we as humans? What are our core values? So it might require you to do a self-assessment. Um, and so that you know, like I said, we're not going to have time to do all this right now, but once we do send out the slide deck afterwards, we encourage you to really do that self-assessment. And we have some resources as well to, to give you for that. But um, also too, your self-assessment might be something that changes as you go along your career, right? You may end up having a, a kid and that changes the course of maybe your home life, right? Or maybe you move um, sections or you move cities and that might affect your what you value and who makes you you. Um, and so it's, it's good to constantly check up on, on really what uh, is your assessment of yourself and what you really value. Um, so looking at that first, um, and then obviously companies have objectives. How do they define success? So when you look at your club, how do you define success at your club? Or how do you define success at your uh, public facility are you, that you're at? Is that selling all the tea times out? You know. Um, it just depends on what place you're at. Um, so really looking at that then for yourself would be goal setting. Um, how do you define success with yourself? Are you going to be able to set goals for yourself where, you know, you want to become specialized in the PGA man in the PGA tracks? That's a goal that you set for yourself um, to really achieve. And then kind of looking at what companies do. They research and development. They uh, build products to kind of have respond into the industry trends. So we saw this a lot with COVID, right? We had to, as a as a golf industry, really change the way we looked at golf. You know, we came up with the, with the flags um, and and all the different things for the flags and the little cup holders uh, taking the ball out of the hole. Um, so you're constantly assessing the business and what you need, uh, and then we can bring that back to ourselves again and figure out what are our limitations. What are we What are we lacking? What do we do well? Um, what do we need to change based upon where we are out in the world right now? Um, and then companies, you know, put together a plan based on what they value, based on what their goals are. They're going to put together a model, a business stra strategy model. Um, and that can kind of correlate back to a personal and professional development plan. Um, and that's something that we, you know, as career consultants are always helping uh, individuals with. You know, that's something at the beginning of the year that I personally do all the time together a plan for what I want to accomplish this year, um, kind of almost like a vision board where you're really putting together your plan and your purpose for the year. Um, and so it's always good to assess yourself there. Uh, and then the last step would be once you have that plan, putting together your marketing and your communication tools to really sell yourself, um, whether it's finding a new job or it's really just asking for a, um, a raise at your current facility. So it's putting together your resume, your cover letter, your online portfolio. Um, and really selling yourself and marketing yourself. So we'll get into the, um, the marketing in a little bit here, but um, it's kind of interesting to look at what companies do and how it can really relate to what we do as individuals. Um, Ed, do you want to add anything on that? Yeah, I mean, basically, um, it's uh, just uh, just a quickie here on this, and and it's it's really more about success in our business and and whether it's a company or or what you're looking for. I'll just piggyback on this right now. My advice is for three things to be successful in this business. And you know, you can look at a number of things what companies you're looking for and how what you bring to the table. But to be successful in the golf business, three things really stand out in a lot of times. One is um, basically uh, living where you want to live geographically. So because you do have a life outside of work. And and you know, we talk about the work-life balance. Uh, I like to say I stole this, I stole this uh, this uh, saying uh, from Robin Shelton, it's a work-life integration. And it's that I love that because you, living where you want to live is number one. Number two is finding the a, a great place to work, whether it's a company, whether it's a club, whether it's a resort. Um, and there's no perfect place. You make it perfect. That's up to you. That's your job is to make it perfect. And the last thing is money. 
we all know in this business that, that Kayla and I fight every single day for, with employers that we need to continue to raise the bar for our, for our salaries and where we need to be within the cost of living and so on and so forth. So we fight that battle every day. But at the end of the day, money comes last when you're looking for this, because if you're really good at what you do and you're doing perfect at your at the place you made perfect, money will chase you and you'll be successful in that arena. So think about those types of things added on to this, uh, what it takes to be successful in your own right and in, in looking at yourself internally. Yeah. Thank you, Ed. Great, great ad there. Um, so yeah, just, you know, just to kind of summarize that, you know, also to, to point out, you know, clubs and facilities, uh, it's a two way street, right? You have to be a good fit for the club, just like the club has to be a good fit for you. So, you know, it, it's a two way interview, right? Whenever you're looking at a job, you need to be able to look at the, the, the job and the, and the facility and think if you really can be successful there and you want to be there. Um, and that's important. So assessing yourself and defining your value, um, is really important. So I like this slide here it just kind of says, you know, what is your value and how are you going to communicate that to a, a, a potential employer? And what that equals is your unique selling proposition. So how are you selling yourself to um, a company or to an employer? That's your selling proposition in the in the world. So when you when as Caitlin led into that, what are you selling? You're selling yourself, but what does that mean? That means what you're going to put on paper, but that also means what you bring to the table that other people don't. Um, if I, if Kate and I look at resumes every single day, um, portfolios every single day, and you know you've got to continue to separate yourself. You look at your, your what you're selling is your your experience. Is, that's what's on paper, but what you can't put on paper is your passion. Uh, that's you can do that in a little bit in cover letter, which we'll cover in a minute, but. Um, showing your passion, your commitment. Um, I don't like the word customer service. That's just my personal thing. I like to say high level service. Um, and we're in we're in the we're in the fun business, you know, creating memories. Um, you know, those are things that you need to talk about. We'll talk about stories and creating stories too, and telling a story a little bit later on. But uh, we'll roll right into that. So um, th when you look at this, the SOAR stories, situation, obstacles, actions, and results. Um, it's basically t telling someone exactly what it is, showing your value to others. Um, and being in a situation where you, where you had, um, uh, uh, something to happen. And we've all been through this. We've all been through this. You've had a situation happen and how did you deal with it? Um, how did you approach it? What, what actions did you take to solve that situation? Good, bad, or indifferent. And then what were the end results? Um, you need to continue to keep track of those things, whether it's something that you write down, whether it's something in, in pictures. Um, your source stories are great separators. It also tells a little bit about your it factor. It also tells a little bit about um, what makes you set you apart from other candidates and other people in our industry. So here's, we got a short video to show you here that tells a great story about um, why stories matter. So sit back and relax for a minute and listen closely. In 2009, a man, a journalist, by the name Rob Walker, wanted to find out is, is storytelling really the most powerful tool of all? And in order to do this, he went on his computer and he bought 200 objects from eBay. And the average price of the objects were about $1. He then called 200 authors and he asked them, hey, would you like to be part of the significant object study? Which means that I would like you to write a story to one of the objects. And 200 authors said yes. So there he had 200 objects, he had 200 stories, and I assume that it was with nail-biting anticipation that he went on eBay again with all the 200 objects. Would there be a difference? Would there be a change? Do you think there was a change? One of the objects was this, this beautiful horse's head. There we go. The beautiful horse's head. Now, this beautiful horse's head was bought for 99 cents and was sold when the story was added for $62.95. That is a slight increase of 6,395%. So was this a one-off situation? 
Not really, because he bought the 200 objects for a total of $129, selling them for $8,000. Now that's insane. But you know what's even more intellectually challenging to understand is how can you and I go to the movies and pay good money to watch movies like James Bond, who are absolutely unrealistic. And we sit there, we enjoy the movie, and some of us will really enjoy the movie. And we leave the theater going like, God, what a man. <laughs> I would like to be more like him. I'd like to walk like him. I'd like to talk like him. I like Bond. Wonder how I could be more like Bond. And then this weird revelation hits you like from nowhere. And you come up with a brilliant idea to walk to a watchmaker shop. And wow, it just happens to be an Omega watch in that shop that resembles the one that Bond was wearing in the movie. And you pay $10,000 to put that watch on your wrist. And you leave that store feeling more like Bond. How is that possible? PQ Media tells us that $10.5 billion is turned over in product placement revenue every single year. How is it possible for you to be so easily tricked by something so simple as a story? Because you are tricked. Well, it all comes down to one core thing, and that is emotional investment. So when you look at when you look at the after you watch that video and you look at that, you are um, you, you realize that how much a story can change. So those were about products. We're talking about people, right? So how you can change and get better at what you do by telling a story. What does that do? That raises your value, your personal value, because you're adding something that no one else can add because it's not their story. It's your story. Um, Caitlin and I will share a story with you later. Uh, as she said in the beginning, too, I would in, uh, encourage you to put some questions or comments in the chat box so we can we can discuss those later as well. But stories are very, very important. Absolutely. Well said, Ed. Um, thanks for summarizing that. Yeah, I love that video. When we saw that, we, we knew we had to put that in there because it, you can think of great storytellers in your life. And um, we actually have one that is on our career consultant team. And it's just someone that you you listen to speak and you're just kind of in awe um, because the stories just sound so amazing, but they're they're true. Um, but they elaborate and they go into detail. And when you're thinking about how you've made an impact at your club um, and the challenges you've overcome at your club, um, a great example would be through COVID. You know, a lot of you stepped up to the plate at your facilities and really owned it. Um, that's what you need to be able to share with a potential employer and and really tell that story um, because we weren't there. So, um, you know, once you get into the interview room, that's really where you're able to share those stories um, and, and with people. Um, so we have, so kind of going into now, you know, would you buy yourself, right? Um, so we've put together kind of who we are, um, we're assessing that and uh, now we're kind of saying, okay, how are you gonna market yourself now? Um, so let's watch a video here real quick about um, marketing. It's a short one, so we'll we'll go through it real quick here. So it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty strong video there, and definitely you know touches touches the heart. Um, you know it tells a story, yes, but it you know it really appeals to your senses. Um, you almost feel kind of like your heart's tingling a little bit. Um, it makes people fall in love, um, and so that that's really where um, you can sell yourself. I think better than than most is when you are able to express those those feelings where the committee or the hiring manager really feels that. So Ed, I'll let you kind of take it from here. 
Yeah. Um, you know, one thing when, you, when you're talking about um, marketing as yourself is your resume and your cover letter. Um, you know, and, and again, being able to uh, not be so humble. You know, the one thing that as PG professionals that we are, we're very humble and we don't want to stand on our soapbox and on the rooftop and yell, I'm the best. And here's why. Well, we have to do that. And you have to continue to do that and be proud of what you've accomplished uh, and what you've done and your stories and your it factor. When you look at these types of resumes that are up here, you can't see them all, obviously, but there's many different types of resumes we see. Um, and, you know, use be creative. Think outside the box. Um, be professional with it. But it's important to know how you're going to market yourself and how you're going to continue to be different um, and stand out. Um, these are the kind of things that we look at all the time that are separators. Um, and I would say that when you when you talk about yourself and marketing your own self, um, it's important. Like I said, now is the time to brag about yourself. Now is the time to get on your soapbox. Um, and most of the time, other people, your members, your 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 staff, your people around you will always tell, talk about you. But you need to put yourself in a role of how to market yourself. And and that's difficult. Again, that's another tool that we help you with, with Kate and I that help you with throughout this process. So. If you're ever struggling trying to know how to market yourself or how to continue to um, put your best foot forward, that's what we're here for um, and showing your value. I will tell you this, that without your best cover letter and without your best resume, um, you're not going to get an interview. And so that piece of paper may sound, may be insignificant to you. Oh, I'm going to cut and paste the last one and change the name to this committee or this general manager or this board of directors, whatever the case may be, you're just setting yourself for failure. You've got to pretend this is every, not pretend, you've got to know that that letter, uh, your resume and your cover letter can change your life forever. I mean, this is a document that can't even, you won't even get in the room with it unless it's perfect. Um, you've got to take it to the next level. You've got to do your very best. I, I'll give an example, um, and Caitlin has hundreds of these stories, thousands maybe, um, where, I'm working with someone about their um, their next step in their career. And, and this is their dream job, okay? Um, I spent probably um, 12 hours on uh, calls like this, Zoom calls and telephone calls, um, and then back and forth with about uh, 42 to 43 emails uh, until we got it right. Um, and that's what it takes. So when I'm saying dedicate yourself to this process, uh, it's a big deal. And if you don't treat it as such and show off your talent and your it factor and what separates you from other people, you're just not helping yourself uh, be the best you can be. Yeah, well, well said, um, Ed. And, you know, those examples are amazing. And, you know, there's always so many great templates out there and an opportunity to be creative. Um, I just love how, um, you know, we, we think of all these documents as your marketing documents. And I just love that, that, that term, because it's not just a resume and cover letter. You're really marketing yourself to the facility. That's essentially, it's a proposal where the club is going to look at it and see if your skill set aligns with what they need. And I like here in this slide where it says on the cover letter, um, are you solving a problem of theirs? Like that's, that's huge, you know, as, as a general manager, a director of golf that's hiring, an assistant pro, like, how are you going to help them solve a problem? Like, that's really what they want to know. Um, and how, what makes you different? So, um, you know, we see this a lot right now, especially like, uh, you know, through our execu searches and some of the clubs that we help a lot of the, uh, some of the questions that come up are, are around retention because, you know, now that clubs, um, you know, a lot of other opportunities are opening up, you know, baseball's back junior, junior whatever's back up um swimming's back up like all these other sports that weren't able to go during COVID are back so how are we going to retain our golfers at the club um because we are starting to see um you know memberships start to kind of plateau so being ahead of that when you get ready to interview um and being ahead of what makes you stand out and how can you solve your problem is is huge so kind of rolling in now to, you know, you're marketing yourself. Um, online presence is huge. Um, you know, we see now more than ever, employers can find so much information about you um, online, um, whether that's through your, you know, your Instagram, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, um, your Facebook, right? Anyone can find you at any time. Um, so especially with this generation and and this culture is it's very easy to find information about someone. So 
you know, control what they're thinking, um, help yourself out and really make sure that your online presence is something that you're proud of and something that you're willing to put out there um, that isn't going to hurt your future self or your, your career. Um, you know, we see that all the time um, happen, you know, where there's a photo maybe of someone that is, is I don't even know an example, someone that's, you know, doing something dumb in a photo and <laughs> that's your Facebook photo. Like the club is going to look you up, you know? And so just be aware of that. Um, brand standards, you know, is your content supporting your brand of who you are as a person? Um, are your pictures and your messaging consistent? Um, so this is kind of an example here of myself and Ed's LinkedIn. So would your LinkedIn exactly compare to what is on your resume? Um, we've seen an example, I actually just saw it recently, of someone's resume that showed that they were a director of golf. And then we went on to their LinkedIn and it showed that they were actually head pro. Um, so it needs to align. Um, so make, making sure whenever you apply for an opportunity or you're getting ready to apply for an opportunity to cross check all of your avenues. Um, does everything align? Does your do your titles align um, and making sure that the photos that you use, you know, are careful, carefully chosen. Um, I think for my my LinkedIn right there, I have the NorCal section logo, which makes sense because I serve the section and I'm proud to be a part of NorCal. You know, Ed, I think I'm not sure what course that is, but it's a nice um, course photo. It's not anything bold or, or too much. Um, it just aligns with really what he stands for. Um, and then kind of also too with that, um, making sure that as we go along, um, you are keeping track of the stuff that you have done. So you can share that with an employer and help market yourself. Um, so we say, keep the receipts, right? Every single event you do, every single tournament you run, every single um, you know member guest you, you are a part of, that's an opportunity to sell yourself and to promote yourself. So take photos, make sure that you're tracking that. Um, just a couple fun ones here from Ed and I, you know, up there in the right corner, that's me at the uh, drive, chip and putt uh, regional a couple years ago at Pebble Beach. Right. And that's it's awesome. You got that documented now. It shows that you are a part of history. Um, myself with the Pebble Beach, you know, Cy Lone Cypress. It's a it's a famous, famous tree there. Obviously, everyone knows about it here in NorCal. Uh, Ed has some of his photos from him and his kids um, with when he won golf professional of the year. Uh, opening a new facility up. You see in the photo with Ed, he has the um, the the ribbon that he's cutting for the new facility that's been opened. So keeping that all and really using that to help you to, to help sell yourself when you're trying to look for a new job. Um, so then once you kind of have all those photos and you're keeping track of that, um, really maybe creating an online portfolio. So exceeding an employer's expectation, right? It's not just now about a resume and a cover letter. It is, uh, we see more and more online portfolios than ever now. So um, a good example is like a Google site, you know, that is completely free um, that you can make that on your own. We're also happy to help you with that. Uh, we use Google sites for a lot of our PGA jobs, uh, but you can literally go online and create your own portfolio with your photos and what you stand for. It's kind of like an online resume. So you see here, this example, he has his personal mission statement. He has great photos of people and members um, that he's helped serve. Talks about his tournament programs that he's ran, um, golf instruction, ladies golf, junior golf, the merchandise, any member trips. You know, I know a lot of clubs are doing member trips. You know, that's great impact to the club, brings revenue to the club and really makes you valuable to an employer. Uh, and then testimonials, that's something that's really big lately. And I'm sure Ed can chime in on that, but more and more we're seeing testimonial pages um, at the back of a resume um, or even on your portfolio, having um, your club president say a couple words about what you've done at the club and how much you mean to the facility. Um, you know, just getting all of that, asking someone on a, a committee to, to do that for you or a past employer, um, it doesn't hurt to ask. So. Um, just some cool examples and we're always happy to help you build that um, and make you so, make yourself stand out so uh, <laughs> this is interviews uh can be hard and i'll tell you right now nowadays uh, you know some of the interviews are online like we are right now uh, most of our first interviews that i help clubs with uh and caitlin as well are are all video first um sometimes a phone call but mostly video um and 
some people are nervous doing it. Uh, it's hard. I, I, I trust me, it's hard. Uh, the other part is when you have to do a one-way video. I don't know if you've any any of you ever experienced that. Um, that pretty much sucks, but uh, it it does showcase your ability to do and and think on your feet very quickly. So you've just got to be able to adjust. And again, when you talk about these types of things in videos and interviews, um, whether it's in person, whether it's on the phone, whether it's a one way uh, or in front of a big committee, these are things to keep remind reminding yourselves of that we're here to help you. Um, this is, we can help you in so many ways, prepare and be ready for this. Um, if you'd reach out and ask for help, we're here for that. Just keep that in mind. I keep saying it because we are here and that's one of the many things that we do is make sure we help you be successful every day. Now let's watch this video here. Dad, um, I need to borrow some clothes for the interviews because I don't have any fancy clothes. You go to my closet, you take whatever you need. You okay. too, Brennan. You guys got to look sharp. It's the most important day of our lives, Rocky. okay? Okay, Dad. Well, Brennan, you certainly have had a lot of jobs. I'm a bit of a spark plug and a human resources lady. Oh, oh you know, it, it's actually, it's Pam. I'm sorry. Well, Pam. No, my name is Pam. Are you saying Pan or Pam? I'm saying Pam. Yeah, I'm sorry, who is this gentleman sitting behind you? Hello, Ms. Lady. I'm Dale. I'm Brennan's stepbrother, and I think I might be able to help with a Pan Pam dilemma. Yeah, that'd be great. Pam. 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 With There's an M. There's a D on the end. There's no D. It's Pam. It's like calm. Here, it's P. Except P A N M. 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 Two M's. M. M. Two M's. M. That was the No, there's just one M. I, oh, okay, I think we've had enough. Shut up for here. one second. Shut, 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 shut your mouth. I need someone Wait, to. Wait, shut your mouth. Shut, shut, your, shut your mouth. I'm sorry? What did You're you just say? You're just coming off stupid. I'm coming off as stupid. You're wearing tuxedos to a job that requires you to clean bathrooms. Please leave this office. We're done with this interview. Do we get any sort of souvenir? Get out of my office! So, obviously, that uh, is an extreme case. And uh, we've all been through interviews, and most everybody uh, on this call has actually uh, conducted interviews. So, um, that didn't go the way that anybody wants it to go. Um, and interviewing can be hard. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you, you've got to put on your best show. We talked about the resume. We talked about the cover letter, the portfolio, but that all gets you there. Now you're in the interview. Now, now it's going live and now it's, you can stand on your soapbox. You can talk about uh, basically your source stories. Um, you can talk about, tell stories about um, that can touch their, their emotions that can affect them in seeing you in a different light um, about some of the things you've done. Um, and I would, I would, as Caitlin said, it's very important to not only build your portfolio, but build your stories, you know, um, and and make a list of them and and write them down. Or if you have a video of something that happened, those are very important because those are great things to 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 bring out in a successful interview uh, because it shows your it factor. It shows your the separating thing that's going to bring you apart from every other candidate that's part that's going for that position. Um, so let's look at some of these these concepts. Um, when you talk about, I already said it, interviewing is hard. So I, I know everybody here is probably a pretty good public speaker. Most PGA professionals are good public speakers. Uh, that doesn't mean you're a great interviewer. Um, you know, it's like taking a test. I'm not the greatest test taker in the world, but I'm the, I'm great in interviews. And I'm a great public speaker. So don't confuse those types of interactions that you have. Um, you you may stand up in front of your member guests tournament and be the greatest presenter with the awards and and so on and so forth that doesn't mean that you're going to be great in the interview interviews take practice take time um, you've got to know yourself and you've got to be very confident in addition to that you've really got to um, do your research do your homework um, I will tell you um, if you're not if you've never been to the club that you're applying to for example make make a visit there uh, unannounced or uh, not unannounced, uh, not knowing that get a chance to play there, maybe look around. Um, because if you don't, you, you've again, you're just not following through on your end to what is could be your dream job, but you didn't continue to do all the things you need to to be successful in that um, to show them that what, what you know, all the stuff that you do, all the stuff you did to prepare. 
Um, I don't want to go into the famous saying, if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail, but I'm going to say it anyway, because that's a fact. So um, it's, it's getting to the interview is extremely hard. The interview can be hard. And then the follow up, there's follow up with that too. And, and we can talk a little more about that, but we're going to talk about uh, additional uh, stories in just a minute. Sorry. I rambled yeah, just, on a little bit, but I know how important that was. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. No, awesome, awesome stuff there. I just have a couple things really quick just to, to add on to his. Um, so one thing too, to note with all the videos, the video interviewing that's going on right now, a big thing is lighting, right? Um, always making sure your background is lit well. Um, you know, it's a, an acceptable background. Um, you know, there's been a couple of times I've had video interviews and it's been completely dark <laughs> in the background. And it's, it's really obviously, it doesn't look good on you when you're trying to, you know, look, uh, interview for a job and your background lighting, we can barely see your face. Um, so something that Ed and I do as con career consultants, and we're always available for you is just practice runs. Like I had a, a gentleman reach out a couple months back that he was getting ready for his video interview the next day. And he just said, Hey, can I set up time with you today? And basically double check everything looks good. No problem. So we just hopped on for 10, 15 minutes, made sure everything was good, made sure his lighting was good, sound was good. Um, like doing that, going above and beyond just to confirm that it all looks great. We're always here to help you with that. Um, and then the last thing was to asking questions. Um, you never want to get to the end of an interview and have them say, hey, do you have any questions for us? And then you say, uh, no, I think I'm good. Um, there's no way you can be completely good. There has to be something um, that you can ask them again, going back to it's a two way street. You know, you need to make sure that you want to be at that facility as well, just as much as they want you to be there. Um, so we can always help you with that. We always have questions to kind of prompt you with. Um, so just use us and um, just wanted to point that out real quick. So, um, yeah, Ed, you want to take this one here? Yeah. So, again, your your source stories are how important they are. Um, and, and if you have a story that is explains how you solved a problem, how you came up with a situation, or basically how you help change um, and impact someone's life, um, that those are huge. And again, that's an it factor because the only person that did that was you. That's your story. No one else can can copy that story because it's yours. So, knowing your stories and helping tell, you know, get off your hum, you know, get out of your humble box and start start screaming and flying around the sky there as that bird is with your stories. Be proud of it. Be be, you know, I I can't stress that enough how important it is to tell your story uh, and unique stories because they're they're unique to you. Um, I think we'll share one in a minute here, but uh, we'd like to hear from some of you. If any of you have stories, you'd like to share a brief story that you, you thought was impactful and that you'd like to share. Caitlin, you want to share a story? Sure. Yeah, I can. We can we can warm everyone up. Let's get it going. <laughs> it's not a very long story, but it is it is one that's impactful. Um, so when I was back working at the club um, in the in Greengrass uh, club setting, uh, I used to work at Columbia Edgewater Country Club, which is a club up in Portland, Oregon, um, and was one of the assistants up there. And I used to do the merchandise buying. Um, and unfortunately, we had a tournament. We had our member guest and one of the guests from out of state. He was coming in from Texas. He saw an item in the golf shop that he really, really wanted. Right. Um, and it was a polo didn't have his size, which was unfortunate uh, because, you know, obviously I want to take care of him. I want to, you know, he's only there for a certain amount of time and I couldn't get it for him. Um, of course I could order it for him, drop ship it, but he really wanted it then. Um, so, you know, going above and beyond trying to think of stuff on my feet, I ended up just calling two of the clubs in the local Portland Metro area and saying, Hey, here's the SKU number. This is the style. Do you have this in a, in a large? And one of the clubs uh, about 20 minutes away had it. So while they were out playing, I, I drove down the street. I picked it up, uh, bought it from that golf shop, traded out one of ours um, and ended up coming back and had it for him when he was done with his round. Um, and it was just, while it seemed small, it completely made his day. Um, and he was totally shocked. And it really showed, you know, thinking on my feet, it showed customer service and it showed that I really cared about making that customer and that, that, guest experience, the best experience, um, because he did go ahead and, and rave about the club after. Um, and that is, if it, that's just because of the one polo that I was able to find for him, that's great. Um, but I just always remember that, just trying to remember to go above and beyond and think on your feet. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's something that I have that I, that I like and what I like to share about. So 
Yeah, but well, if anyone else has anything, or Ed, if you want to share one as well. Caitlin, I'll tell you that 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 individual still talking about that to this day. I guarantee it. Um, I absolutely guarantee that. Uh, I'll tell a quick story as well, too. If anybody wants to raise their hand or chime in the, in the chat box, uh, we'd love to talk to you as well, too, and hear from you. Um, I had a, uh, when I was a young assistant, I had um, a situation where um, one of my uh, members passed away. Uh, he passed away and he was, uh, I want to say he was 87. And his wife came in the golf shop the next day and, and she said, um, not the next day, I'm sorry, next week, I apologize. And she said, um, you know, are you Ed Winecki? I said, yeah. She goes, um, can you help me uh, learn how to play golf? She goes, you taught my husband and, and he played, we were married for 47 years. Uh, she was 90 years old. And I said, I'd love to teach you golf. She goes, I never could understand why he played and then fun he had. And now uh, I want to learn. So um, I want to figure out how to do that. So I worked with her for about two months. Um, she played with the nine hole ladies for about three years. And she came to me uh, about a year later and, and she said, uh, I wish I would have found out golf earlier. Uh, this has been the greatest time I've had. Uh, I never thought I could be happy in my life now. And uh, just a great story. So she passed away at age 93, but the last three, three years of her life, she found golf, she found new friends, and she discovered how, how what a great thing it can be. So uh, I'll take that with me forever. And, and uh, I wish she, she was still with us. I could have her share the story too, but yeah, pretty cool. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Ed. Really, really cool. And you can you can sense that you almost kind of get emotional about it because it meant something to you. And that's, those are the best, uh, the best stories. And again, it goes back to when we said in the beginning that we're all here for that need of giving back to our community, that need of serving our members and growing the game. And that, you know, that's essentially what, why we're all in it and why we all do it. I mean, <laughs> there's so much other stuff we could do in life, right? But we choose golf and we do that every day um, because it, it means something to us and it, it's special, um, especially because we get to engage with all of, all of us and all of these people here in California. So um, yeah, if, if, if anyone has an example that they wanna share, please raise, raise your hand or write in the chat box. Um, we'd love to have you share. Um, and we can also jump in now just to some question and answer. That's, uh, that's kind of the conclusion of our, our presentation, uh, but we are going to send this out afterwards in the PowerPoint. So it'll be an opportunity for you to kind of go through the slides again and really engage and start writing some things down and kind of get your mind thinking. Uh, and like we said in that last slide, we want to encourage you to really think over the next few weeks about stories, like in your day to day, there has to be something that you did that impacted a member today um, and made their life better. Uh, write that down, you know, and we want to hear about it. So once you have those, call Ed or I, and we're happy to chat, hear about that, help you with your resume, help you with the cover letter. Um, but really just be a friend to you, you know, and that's kind of what we are. You know, I think we're consultants, but I think at the end of the day, we're, we're really just friends. And I think that that a lot of people in my section would say that, try to be there for people um, and listen to them and their needs. And I think I know Ed does the same thing. So, um, yeah, if anyone has any any thoughts, questions, go ahead. Hi, Caitlin and Ed. This is Tom Sun from uh, San Diego and beautiful weather in San Diego. I just wanted to uh, give a huge thumbs up for this presentation. Uh, I'm a member. I've been a member for about four years now. And I think this is a great presentation for your, our associates and to help them, guide them, assist them to, um, to become better uh, as well as position them, themselves for a better future uh, within our golf, great golf industry and uh, something that I think we should do uh, you know, frequently and the future is our associates and I think this is a great uh, platform uh, to make to help our associates become future leaders of our, of our great association so well, thank you for doing that. Thank you Tom. Thank you Tom, it means a lot. You know, I will say uh, I've never seen so many bashful golf professionals in my life uh, right now, but that's okay. I'm not calling anybody out. I know a lot of people on this call, so does Caitlin. So we'd love to hear from some other people, please. Hi, oh, Caitlin. Ed, AJ here, Northridge Country oh, Club. Hey, AJ, go ahead. Good Hope to see you. Doing well, long time no see. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, I struggle with the most, you know, how you know, one of your first slides says change jobs. Now, 
you know, a couple of you guys, I mean, I've been here at Northridge now, uh, starting my 20th year here, started out here when I was uh, 18 years old as, as, a, a, as a cart kid. And one of the things that I find the most struggling part is being complacent, right? Like you're very happy. You're, you're, you know, there's no risk involved anymore, right? Like the, you're, you're, the club needs you, the club wants you, you know, and what I find the most difficult part about it is taking that risk of moving on to maybe, you know, step up, you know, in, in, in your career. Um, so if you could share maybe any ideas to alleviate risk or risk is actually good and that's what will help you grow as a human being more so not even just career. Caitlin, go ahead. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. And, you know, I know you have an awesome uh, job there at Northridge. It's hard to want to leave that place because it is amazing. Um, but I think the biggest advice for that is I think a couple things, first of all, kind of have to look at your, your values and, and what you value in life, where your life is at um, family life, where you want to be, um, kind of looking at that, um, you know, the risk might not be as big of a risk if it aligns really with what you want in your life going forward. Uh, but I think with risk is you have to just take the leap, right? You have to, you're never going to be comfortable. And I think that that quote is something that my dad always says to me is there's never going to be a right time in your life ever for any situation, um, whether that's work, personal, anything. And you're never going to have the right perfect time. Um, so jumping in and trusting your abilities is really the key. Uh, and I think an example of that is, is probably really what myself and Ed do on a daily basis. I mean, do we know how to be a career consultant? At, you know, there is no manual to do that. We just jump right. in and you figure it out um, and you do the best you can. So I don't know if I answered the question, but I, I think I would look at yourself and what you value and also just know that there's never a right time, really. All right. Well, thank you guys for, for your uh your slides here today. It was, a, it was a really good show. Thanks. Thanks, Adrian. I think Brandon was next. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, uh, Brandon, I'm down here at Lost Postes Country Club down in Camry under Todd Kiefer. Um, one of the things we do uh, about giving back you're talking about is um, we keep track of all our members, like anniversary dates and birthdays. So come like tournament times, like we're going over announcements, we'll, we'll shout out all our, our members who have spent like anniversaries, whether it's one year to 25 years, or we'll sing them happy birthday over the intercom, or we'll do like pleasant surprises. So we'll, we'll maybe we'll bring them a cake one day, or we'll, or we'll give them a dozen golf balls, uh, just something to make them feel like we truly, truly care about them here at Lost Poses. Right That's on, really cool. thanks for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. really cool. That's yeah, that's uh, that, there's there's your add that to your list. Right. I mean, yeah. uh, put that on your your list of it factors that you do something different in your club than other clubs would. And and I would put that as a huge plus. If I was interviewing you, I would ask for more information. So that's awesome. Thanks Thank for sharing. You. Thank you. Go ahead, John. Thank you. Hi, Ed. Hi, Caitlin. Thank you again for the presentation. Um, good to see you both. One of the fears that I have is I've got a wonderful job and I love it here at Toscana. John Cochran, GM at Toscana Country Club is beautiful. But once in a while, I'll get a call from another club saying, would you be interested? And I might know like the board president there or just due to my large network. And I've always been a little shy because I thought, gosh, I don't want to take a chance just even to find out more and then have someone find out that I was looking and maybe cause me a problem here at my job. So you're a little leery about how to, how to jump in there and do that. Is that fair? Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I've, I've kind of stepped away from a couple of opportunities that I might've been interested in just for fear that it would affect where I'm at now. Yeah, I think I think there's I, this. I could have an hour long conversation with you about this, but I, what I will say is kind of back to I said it early in the presentation. The three things that you'll be successful in this business and and probably be the most the happiest in your life is live where you want to live. Number one, number two is find the perfect fit for you, um, because it's there's no perfect club, there's no perfect job. You make it perfect, right. and then and then third is the money, uh, because if you're very good at what you do and you are very good at what you do, the money will chase you. Uh, and you'll be successful in that. So um, I, I would honestly say in, to, to, to summarize a little bit, um, 
if you if it's something that that you saw come across your screen or someone calls you and you didn't jump out of your chair and, and run to your wife and say uh hey gail <laughs> we got to talk about this <laughs> right if you didn't do that right away um it's probably not even worth ex look taking the next step and even looking at it that's great advice thank you and thank you both again this is a great presentation thanks john thanks john go ahead joey well, hello, and thank you guys uh, for more than just this presentation, but uh, both of you have helped me get to where I'm at, um, Ed especially, uh, interviewing me and hiring me for my first head professional job, so that was huge. Um, but a little bit of the story for me is um, 2016, I was working at Spring Valley, which is a small public course, and went uh, wine tasting at Clos Chance with my wife. She's overlooking Cordoval and says, hey, honey, where's that? What golf course is that? said, oh, that's, that's Cordoval. You know, they are, they're about to host a U.S. Women's Open, and they've hosted a couple PGA Tour events. That's a, it's a great golf course. She says, well, why don't you go work there? And I couldn't help but just kind of laugh because of where I was at. Um, that seemed like a huge reach. Uh, but today I sit here as an assistant golf professional at Cordoval because I kept reaching, and I kept reaching out to people like Caitlin and people like Ed um and they told me to trust myself and trust my instincts and go after it so um here i am and and there's no reason not to chase it if you feel like there's something out there that could be better for you or closer to home or provide you a better opportunity to to show off your skill set because um i have found a fit that uh, i don't think i would have if i didn't just keep chasing um and if i wanted to stay complacent and stay at Boulder Ridge or San Jose Country Club where I was before, or even stay as the head golf professional at Baylands, um, I would not have found this good of a fit. So you have to kind of keep chasing and keep trusting people like Ed and Caitlin. <laughs> Thank you guys. That's so cool. They, that makes me like want to tear up. That's so exciting. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> Thanks, Joey. Well, really cool. This is awesome. We, you know, we almost need to have an hour webinar where we just share stories, you know, yeah. and that's what we need to do as pros is just share stories because we don't get to hear this enough. It's really cool. Makes me makes me feel positive about the future. That's for sure. Um, if no one else has anything else, um, we got one more, right? Maybe Rena. Go ahead. Rena, you're on mute. Sorry. I am an assistant over at North Ranch Country. She froze there for a minute. Ed always showing up to our events and always being available and super encouraging and excited about his position to help us become better and find something better for us, always looking to upgrade us. So thank you guys so much. Thanks, Raina. Thanks for all you do. Thanks for being you. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Love the sharing. I think there was maybe one more hand up, but I think it's gone now. But um, like we said, we're going to send this out afterwards, the presentation. So please, if you have any other questions that pop up, please reach out. Our uh, contact's up there. Ed, do you have anything else? Final, final words? I, it's, it's, I'm thrilled to death to see everybody that I know on this call. For those of you I don't know and we don't know, um, we look forward to helping you and getting to know you better. Um, and we're always here for you. So this is great. I, I agree with Caitlin. I think we could do another one where we talk about uh, best practices, some share some stories um, and get some people energized about um, helping each other because we are a collegiate group here and you wouldn't have got on this call if you didn't want to get better at what you did and and be a better professional. So thanks for being here today. Right on. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Take care. Thank you, everyone.